we're going to go ahead and start loading this thing up. We're going to start with a few um, basic things here. So um, one of the most basic things that we could do is we could just have um, a master EQ where we would have the option to, to you know, reduce or even kill out certain frequency bands from the low, the mid, or the high. Let's go ahead and label macro one and macro five. I'm going to click here on macro one. I'm going to right click. I'm going to rename it and call this EQ high. For macro five, I'm going to click on macro five, right click, select rename, and I'm going to label this one EQ low. Okay. Now, just for this most basic one here, we're going to go here to our browser, audio effects, and we're going to take this one right here, the EQ3. I'm going to take it and drop and drag it inside our rack, and I'm going to make sure that I drop it to the left of the limiter. Here it goes. Boom. Right where I wanted it. If I take a closer look at um, the EQ3, you can see that it has a low, mid, and high kill switch, and then a knob for each of these. Down below, it also has a place where we can set our crossovers. That's just where the frequency band is going to be separated for each of these channels. We're going to go ahead and leave the high one alone, but let's set the frequency low just a little bit lower. Let's click here and type 150. This way, when we cut out the bass, it will cut out our bass and our kick, but if you have a singer that has a little bass in their voice, you know, male vocals in particular, um, it's not going to make them sound like it's coming through a little telephone or a little tiny speaker. It will still have a little, little body to it. All right? So we'll just set that frequency cut off just a little bit lower. Next part, it's pretty simple. We're going to go here to the gain high control, and we are going to right click on the gain high knob on our EQ3. We're going to tell it to go to the EQ high right here. That's why I like to label these things right off the bat. It just makes it a lot easier when you go to map it and customize those mappings. All right. There we go. Next, gain low. Right click on the gain low knob on the EQ3. Map it to the macro that we labeled EQ low. Yo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now we have one little issue I want to show you. If you look at the gain now when I turn it all the way up, you can see that it now goes up to 6 dB. 6 dB for the low now as well. So it just added 6 decibels of gain to our high frequency and to our low frequency. With me talking right now, that's not such a big deal, but if we were playing music on a big system, that would really throw out the balance of the mix and uh, would not sound good. So we're going to learn how to do one of our first um, little customization things. I use these techniques here all the time when I'm building effects. So everybody already knows about the, the MIDI mapping button up here. But um, the rack itself actually has its own special mapping panel right here. If we go and hit the map button on the rack itself, look what happens to the browser. It gives us a special panel called macro mappings. And in this panel, we can see any current mappings, what device is mapped to, what feature is mapped to. And then here we have a column that says minimum and maximum. If you can't see that column, sometimes you might have just pulled this little divider a little bit too far to the left. Just take your mouse and put it right on that divider so you see that double arrow, left and right arrow. And then just drag a bit to your right and it will be revealed. Okay, we're going to be using this quite a bit. This feature here allows us to set minimum and maximum custom values if we need to. Now you can see that the minimum, when we turn the knob all the way counterclockwise, it goes to minus infinity db aka silence <laughs> the maximum though is adding 6 db of gain for both our high and low channel so all we need to do is just click in here and we're just going to type zero and hit return 
And we'll do the same here for the gain low. We click in the maximum column in the box that says 6 dB. We'll type the number 0 and hit return. And we just told it it's okay to cut the sound all the way out when we go counterclockwise. But when we turn it up clockwise, we want to stop at 0 dB. This is really important with a lot of these new controllers because they have these endless rotary controllers. It's not like um, a knob on a DJ mixer where at a certain spot it stops turning. This one will just keep turning and turning. But even though we can keep turning the knob, you can see it now stops right where it's supposed to, 0 dB. Test the low as well. All right. So yeah, that is our first device that we have in there. We have a high and low EQ where we can go ahead and dead out those frequencies on the entire mix. Okay.